to Hot Team Lessons. This is a podcast where we talk about us becoming small business owners. And along the way, we interview some amazing people like Jacob. Um, and as my wife puts her phone away, awesome, cool. Now we're officially starting. Um, but we, we've we been excited. I think my wife talks about you quite a bit almost every other night or so. Jacob said this. Jacob said that. Jacob said this. Oh, I need to get on this. Jacob's going to get on me. Like, she's always <laughs> saying oh, your good. name. Um and so when I met you at the vision night, I was like, hey, Jacob's track is really cool. Like we need to get him, get him around here. Like I can see why you talk about him so much. Um, but then like talking to you that night, like you find out that you had a lot of different, like you just have a lot of different things coming up. You do, you've a done lot of a value. lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the best way to say it. You have a lot of value attached to who you are. Um, and then like talking to you more, I was like, yeah, you're on the same page. I would love to live out of the country and like <laughs> still make money and like live off goal. pennies over there. Um, not to, you know, abuse the system, but just benefit from it. Um, I don't know where I went with that. But nonetheless, <laughs> I just think you're an amazing person and I wanted Thank to bring you. you on here. And then with you starting Karuvi, like I just feel like we're you're a huge fan. Yes. Of Karuvi. Oh, and you. you and Tharmila are rock stars. Honestly, I've been doing marketing for a long time. And it's so nice to have people who talk the same language as I do. Exactly. But not yes. only that, just understand how to manipulate and work with the systems. Honestly, I love just w w sitting in the trainings and just listening to you guys talk. Like, <laughs> I'm to I totally, I know that I've been with, I've been a realtor now and I, this is my sponsor um, into EXP. FY, every <laughs> episode is not going to be mentioned EXP. But, but the last three has. <laughs> the last three and has. Okay. None of these have been sponsored by EXP. <laughs> the future. Um, but honestly, I fangirled you guys and the Wolfpack in general for almost a year and a half before I even joined EXP. And I'm like already in as as an agent and I'm still fangirling all of you guys awesome. because you guys are so brilliant <laughs> and smart. That's and like that's like if you just got a Disney show, the Marvel world, <laughs> but you're not in the Avengers yet and you're like fangirling. Like I'm in the Marvel world, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not an Avenger yet. That's me. I'm not an Avenger yet. And you and Darmill oh, yeah. are totally Avengers. And and I, and I admire you guys so much because I think that the work that you're doing and the value that you bring to agents is insane. Yeah. Like I, I was um, talking to an agent. Well, one second, one second. Tell us a little about yourself because we've already yes. gone to. Oh my no, God. Okay. But tell us a little about yourselves. Like... What do you want to know? <laughs> what got you started and wanted to like not work for somebody anymore? No because it feels like that's something that you've been. Doing. I have been like that since I was like a little kid. Even my grandma, we had this conversation. She's like, you have never been normal. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, which way are you going with this? And she's like, no, you always did things your way. You did not let anybody, when your dad would show you something, you're like, no, I don't like it like that. I'm going to do it this way. And your way worked just as good. And she's like, the very earliest memory I have is you, my grandma, I don't know if you guys follow race, but my grandma lived by Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So I'm from Indiana, Indianapolis area, <laughs> Indy 500, Brickyard 400. That was part of me growing up, going to the races with my dad, bush races, all that. My grandma lived like probably 10 minutes walking distance from the track. Wow. So you could hear it. People would park in her yard. I looked forward to as a kid to go up there on Brickyard 400 in August. And all my cousins would be there. And one year I was like, wait, how much are they charging for water? And my, I asked my dad, how much is water? And so I remember getting out and trying to divide. And my dad's like, well, it's really like 10 cents of water. I'm like, but they're charging $3. And this was back in like the 90s, early 90s. And I was like, oh, I could do that. So we we started out one year. We bought a <laughs> pack of waters. And we I sold them. I remember walking up and down the street yelling, water, a dollar. And I sold them for a dollar. And we sold out in like the first 10 minutes. I was like, yeah. how much did I make? And so that was my first lesson in business. In 13, I was like mowing lawns and basically hustle, wow. hustling my brother's friends that were younger <laughs> and going, hey, if you go mow this yard because I can't get to it. I'll give you $10. And then they really gave me 20. So I kept half, half. And I'm like, oh, I could just pay everybody to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I started just naturally getting into that. And then about uh, when I got out of school, I worked for Eglin Air Force Base. And it was really weird because I had to stop school for a while at college. And I had interviewed the week before at Eglin Air Force Base. And I called them and said, hey, I have to stop school unexpectedly. 
is there any way I can bump that internship into something more full-time? I can work mm -hmm. more hours. And they're like, absolutely. We're actually behind. And I remember showing up and they're like, after day two, they're like, Hey, can you program? And I was like, I had some classes. They're like, here's a credit card. Buy every book you need. We really desperately need you. And I worked. It's funny how God lines things up. I worked for a company called Jacobs Technology. <laughs> it was the largest technology company at the time. And they had a contract with the government on Eglin Air Force Base. Wow. In Pensacola, where I was going to school. Well, it was actually Eglin. But um, I worked for the T's group. And they made all of the weapons defense systems for the U.S. Air Force. Wow. And I had access to all this stuff. Like, <laughs> they technically don't give you your clearance right away. And I just started in. They're like, wait, you're way more than this. Can we have you try to learn this? And so I started learning it. And I started doing lunch and learns and training and basically teaching these engineers how to use Microsoft Word. They're like, build a weapon, <laughs> but they couldn't answer their emails because they couldn't download stuff. So I did that for a while. And I realized they weren't paying me what I was worth because I didn't finish my degree yet. Mm -hmm. But in order to finish my degree and to get that money, I have to finish my degree to get the subs the subsidizing for them to pay for it. And I was like, this is a scam. Like, yeah. And I started working myself independently for a subsidiary of city. I was selling like mortgages, insurance, stuff like that. Yeah. So I started doing that and I started a piano studio and that's really what piqued my interest. I became one of the biggest like piano teachers in the Gulf Breeze area wow. and I had a waiting list and all because I told one mom, she said, will you come to our house? And I said, I'm not driving 20 minutes to teach one student for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you get me five people, I'll do that. She, because they were all like those dance moms yeah. gossiping. Mm -hmm. oh, he's exclusive. He probably won't take you. Really, that's how they talk. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I'm broke. I will take them. <laughs> yes. I had 35 <laughs> students within two months. Wow. And I was teaching full time, working 15 hours a week, making over three grand a month right out of college. And my, everybody was telling me to get a real job. And so that kind of started the whole entrepreneurial thing. And then I finally worked for a web design company. Wow. And I kept giving them these ideas, building on top of what they had. And they fired me because the boss didn't like me. <laughs> Literally, I was doing my work. I kind of called him out. He didn't like that because uh, he was he was kind of a harassment. Yeah. And <laughs> so I was like, dude, I'm not working in this environment. So he said no. And so I left. It was the best thing ever. I started my business, started a photo booth company. And like, I could talk, wow. like, I could write a book about the yeah. stuff, but I've just always like, I hate, I like doing things my, my way, way. Yeah. and I have such a natural talent for that. And I heard T.D. Jake say in a book, he has a book and a podcast with um, oh, that guy that's in North Carolina. I can't think of him, but he wrote a book. Steve Furtick. Furtick. Yes, Furtick. <laughs> and he did a thing. And one thing he said that always resonated in my mind, he said, you're either born to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or you're born to be an employee. There's nothing wrong with either. When you're at a job and you're meant to be a business owner, you're going to drive your boss crazy because you're not meant to be in that position. <laughs> Vice versa. You are going to be drive, drove crazy by them because you're not meant to be in that. It's just a stepping point to give you some money. But eventually, you got to answer that calling. That, that is so 100%. good. That is one hundred percent true. I think both of us just flash back to all these moments. I'm like frustrated with my boss, or you're right. frustrated with your boss, and I'm just like, there's an easier I, way to do this. I, and it, and I it's so have mad. always yeah. been called overly ambitious, yeah. and I was like, but but I thought, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, I feel like the smart kid in school. Um, I was never the smart kid in school, but I feel like the smart kid in school who is not being challenged. And then I start slacking off. Yeah. And so like at the office, I crack jokes. I make fun. I do all these jokes and I really don't get that much work done. I do get work done. <laughs> I said, not that much work. You're I get stuff what done. They pay you to get done. Yeah. Like I feel like, especially like we just got our income tax and I was like, I made this. I think I almost made more of that in, my, in our side business. Like, right. I just, it didn't make it's sense. It's not our side business. It's our company. Well, if I wake up early in the morning for that first, it's <laughs> it's side. Like, right. As soon as those hours But it's switches, kind of transition. Yeah, as soon as that does, it's no longer a side <laughs> business, but it's a business. Um, and I just think, like, that thought process of, like, if you're being frustrated at work, it's probably because you, you need to start your own thing. Like, Especially if you're the one kind of innovating things. Because the way I look at it, too, like, I, I learned very easy on what really pushed me into going back to it. I had people in my life, and this is all about having the right people in your life. Yeah. I started uh, dating someone, and they didn't like the fact that I worked 15 hours, that 
they totally stupid by the way because they came home i'm a good cook you can ask anybody <laughs> i had dinner i was making like general chose from scratch and watching all these recipes on rage rate and i had like a buffet Jacob, and you're gonna come home to that to be coming to my house every day hey, you can come dinner. to richmond we always got food <laughs> literally people love people come to our house and they're like we're so relaxed here because we're just very chill and we have food and people love to eat and like you don't get like this like if you don't like food and it's so funny it's just that like i don't even know where i was going with it but but it, it's crazy what, what, what were we talking about no about you were talking about your uh oh yeah ex. X. So they didn't like that. They like, and my dad kept, get a real job, get a real job. I'm like, what does that mean? You're like scared you're going to lose your job every minute. I don't want to live like that. Yeah. yeah. And so I went back to work in IT for this uh, wireless company. And I realized in that moment, and this, I don't mean this to sound like bragging, but I was way smarter than most people I worked for. And I realized in the moment, somebody told me, look, the smart people don't get promoted. We need them in positions of production. We we promote managers because they follow the rules and they know how to babysit. Yeah. Yep. And I've actually like, had uh, I've I actually quit. yeah, quit. I've actually had a manager say the same thing to me. We actually talked about that yeah. too. Yeah. What oh. that was actually one of the they wanted to put me as a manager and then I was like no. Because I knew what was coming, mm -hmm. and it was just not. And something. you generally make less as a manager too. Depending. Yeah, I was working when I worked for this internet company. I was in tech, but I was really good at talking and sales. And so my boss always heard that because I always had the bundles because I want money. So I'd sell out all my bundles, and he's like, "Wow, you're really good. Have you ever thought about working retention? You can make more money." I was like, "But I like the tech," and I said, "I save way more customers with tech." And so my boss came to me and she's like, we're going to start a hybrid team. We're going to take tech people that are good on the phones and we're going to put them in the department where you save them and keep them from canceling because most of the reasons people canceled was for tech reasons. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work and they don't have the patience to really talk them through it. So we started this hybrid team and then I got promoted as what they call like a team lead. And then I was like, put me back. And they're like, why? I was like, I was making way more money on the phones than you just giving me a dollar raise an hour. So nothing in the corporate thing lined up for me at all. And then boom, released to all this. I got my hand in everything. I yeah. need to slow down a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting. But I've always been a big, big picture person. So I can see the end result. I've always made sure to put myself like my business partner, Thermo. Like she's more nitty gritty. Like yeah. step by step has to have everything laid out. I can see like the end. So we, you have to put people in your lives that compliment you. Yeah. And that's really what's helped me in business is that I need somebody to be like, okay, I need you to take me there, but I also need to slow you down and make you do this first. Yeah. Yeah. And I so agree with that because joining the team and being under you and Tharmilla, I feel like. I, when Shout I was Thermilla. doing, yes, Thermilla, I feel like we're talking a lot about like, Thermilla. We're going to put a picture at? of her right here. Uh, um, you know, the truth is, is that when I was looking to join a team, I knew I wanted to join the Wolfpack, but I was looking for something very specific. Right. And I looked and I, within the Wolfpack, I was looking for a specific thing and the, the group that would give me the highest value. And I feel like I found that. Um, not only because like... Honestly, 75% of the job to, is promoting yourself and with the marketing. And you guys provide such a wonderful value to that. It really like takes you away from having to figure all of this stuff out constantly to, okay, not only do you have this amazing value when it comes to marketing, but you also have how to build your business. Um, all of these practical things that go into building a, a, a right. so being and being a solo agent right and so yeah because it's our language i mean literally even when i found tharmilla like i found mike's group first in the wolf pack and then finding her i was like man you speak my language you know exactly where i'm going before i say it and we realized that clicked and that's what a lot of agents are lacking a lot of business owners period it's one thing that really drives me crazy my pet peeve in marketing <laughs> especially among real estate agents, if you're watching, <laughs> is that people push marketing off last. 
Yeah. I'll give you a prime example. My friend manufactures photo booths. These people would go buy photo booths. And I saw an opening when I first started my marketing company. I was like, I'll provide photo booth service. I own a photo booth company. I know how they need to market themselves. These idiots would, and I say that with respect, would go buy <laughs> 10 photo booths. I don't say that. I'm like, you respect. can't even rent one. And people don't know you exist, but you can't afford a website. Well, I'll just go do it on Wix or Weebly. No, you won't because you can't even design the template for the photo to print out correctly. How are you going to design a web page and know the content, know the sales language? Yes, I understand people have resources and you have to start out that way. But if you're serious about a business and these people are taking out loans, I'm like, take out a loan for your website, buy two photo booths, not 10, and go focus on your marketing. And then when you're growing, then you scale. People, it's the one thing, it's same thing in real estate. They spend all this money on leads when there's better ways to market yourself to get those leads. They still don't know how to nurture them. And so that's where all this came into play. Yeah, and and getting the leads, I think that... I mean, there's just, just so you guys know, when you're buying leads, it's a good possibility that five or six other people have the same list of leads mm-hmm. that you just bought. Don't buy leads. You want to get them organically. And the only way to get them organically is by marketing yourself. Content. Well, okay. Yeah. Now with that, I'm pitching a Via Creative. We do content <laughs> creative. <laughs> no, but it's funny that you say that like, they do think about it last. Like even in the wedding industry, they we're thought about last. We're thought as like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I forgot about photos or I forgot about a video or mm-hmm. especially in the market down here, people don't want video as much, which is weird. Uh, they want photos first, which is to me the worst. Um, I think photos are great, but the video says a lot more. Um, and also, that's just me as a videographer. Also when you're looking at statistics when across the platforms, video, video. is going much more further and than that's, that's the other thing. Photos. That's one of the things I really wanted to bring you on because you started this thing, Karuvi, which is really cool. Logo. Psh. Um, <laughs> but I, we're in a world of short form videos. Like um, Adobe just put out this quote, I think it was earlier last year or late last year, 80% of our cell phone usage is all short form video. Mm-hmm. Like even Gary V said, he's like short form videos lead to long form videos. Like is there's a lot of information out there and short form videos are the, literally the best way to do that. It's the best way to show people that you're smart, that you're educated, that you know what you're talking about, that you know how to talk in front of people. Like, I have somebody that's like, they're like, oh man, I don't like being in front of a camera. And I was like, dude, just practice. Like, I just put the camera with your phone and just practice. You don't have to do nothing. Or in with front it. of a mirror. Yeah, and just practice, practice. Your facial like, expression. Like, you you can sell something to anybody, but I don't know. There's something about getting in front of a camera and talking and being able to use that charisma that you naturally already have mm-hmm. to sell something or to push something. It's a quicker way to connect with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. When you have to read something and see photos, you don't get to connect. And yeah. when you hear people, their natural self on video because there's some people that are just like but when you get your natural self like i don't even my video quality this would probably be the best video quality i have (laughs) and i don't care and people get gassed that i'm in marketing i don't care about you even were like yeah i I can't believe you're doing it that way but the idea that you're actually doing it you're putting stuff out there is way more valuable than the quality of the video i don't care about having a stream i don't practice by the way, so I'm probably giving this away. Look, I don't practice. If I can do videos, <laughs> anybody can't. I don't. I literally just go, I'm going to do this topic. And it's something I know. And I just talk. And sometimes it turns into a 30-minute video, a 20-minute. Short form is very hard for me because I Love like to, to give every little detail. <laughs> so you really have to think about what you people really, want to know. Yeah. And it's the whole... Uh, Green eggs and ham scenario. Oh, where it is. They, they made them go down even smaller, smaller every time they wrote the book. And that's where it's like, just because it's shorter doesn't mean it's easier. It's even harder to make short form videos. Yes. Um, and I know that's what Rose was bringing up last time. I forgot when we were talking about this, but you're a big fan of copy AI um, or chat GTP. Mm-hmm. There you go. Chat TPT. Now I am. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm a fan of copy AI and I just started with chat G- GTP and I was like, okay, this is actually pretty good. Like this is a little interesting and it's free. Like these are the I buy, these are the tips that I get. I almost was gonna buy. <laughs> it's a, worth it. Copy AI, I, and I no, think it is. I, think I it bought ChatGPT. Oh, did you? I got invited, and it's twenty one bucks a month. And I'm telling you, I oh, didn't like cheaper. ChatGPT. If you don't know what it is, it's an AI cop tool. It's better than Jasper Copy AI. Oh, it's and the real reason good. why it's not that the content I think is better. 
It's the way you get the content. Yes. Copy AI, you have to go, I need website copy. And here's yeah. the information. And then they spit it out. And they don't ever give you what you need. This is literally like you're talking to your assistant mm-hmm. saying, hey, I need a 1,200 word blog article on this. Talk about these five points if you know your content. And it writes, it wrote my bio. And I was like, yes. dang, I want to be him when I grow yeah, up. I think, <laughs> like, he's that good. Anybody who's struggling on writing a bio, like an Instagram bio, a Facebook bio, or a way to even introduce yourself to public you should give it a shot use copy AI. it's free for seven days try it out use chat to it's free like there's no really excuse to have a really bad bio at this time mm-hmm. because these these this ai technology really does help out i remember yeah. i did it for rose and i and i was like dang i sound good yeah. right like yeah. i sound real good it's so good though like i even heard somebody say oh you can tell it to write your uh real estate market report in the voice of a pirate and it's like iron matey and it really <laughs> writes out i'm like and I had to translate stuff in Spanish. Like I'm bilingual too. And like, I didn't have to sit there and fight it. It was better than Google translate. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. And I just went and fixed a few things. I mean, it's not perfect. You you have to be very specific. Cause yeah. one thing about chat GPT, most people don't know is that it only goes up until the end of 2021 with content. It's not connected to the internet. You're accessing it from the internet, yeah. but it doesn't go Google something. Yeah. Okay. So you have to give it its content. It's just a writing assistance tool. And that's where I think like, if you know your stuff, but it's really hard for you to write, this plays a huge factor for yes. you. Like I, we were watching a video, I think it was like a couple nights ago. Um, it was about chicken coop and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And the guy, it I was, it was an awesome idea. Uh, he like put, why you shouldn't raise chickens and chat gb gave him like 10 reasons why you shouldn't and he was like debunking them because you know it's pulling information offline so not everything is factional yeah. or at least correct possible for you as an individual there's yeah. more information so he was able to like debunk it or go oh no this was actually true um but i think like or give you, tips around yeah, how, or how give not tips around to, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah um so i think if you know your stuff and you're educated in your field which every business owner is because right. it's your business. Like you can type this down. It'll give you information. top 10 reasons of this, four reasons for this. These are all video content that you can it break writes up. your video scripts. It 100% does. Literally we were setting down when I finally figured out how to use this. I wrote it off. I thought this is stupid. It gives me a 200 word article. What am I going to do with that? And I was going the long way. I was like, <laughs> okay, give me point number one. Here's point number one. Give me, po- no, you don't have to do that. You really don't. We sat down. And I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> oh, the video script. Because Miguel's doing all these video things and he's trying to figure it out and learn it. And I was like, oh, they said I'll write video scripts. Let's test it out. So I write, let me, I need a five minute YouTube video script on five reasons to move to Houston. And it starts out opening cut uh, Houston skyline video slowly uh, going over the Houston skyline. And then the narrator says this. It gave you the edits. I was like, <laughs> okay, give me a TikTok script. It'll give you, if you tell it a 30 second, yeah. it'll give you a 30 second. Sometimes it goes wow. a little over, but it was just amazing because now- You just it, have to talk a little it's quicker. It's just one more yeah. excuse why you taking away an excuse yeah. why you can't do something. Yeah. Now, I had a problem when we would joke, I, I don't have time to get all this content on, plus run a business and do websites and do all this stuff. And now I'm like, okay, I can crank out articles. It would take me one hour to do an article, like- People that say it takes 10 minutes is because they're just using the content. But yeah. to actually really get it down, yeah. get it now I can get one article. And one day I can crank out 10 blogs. Yeah. And they're quality, well-written blogs that do SEO too. And it's like, and, and that's the thing that I find so crazy, crazy about people who are like, oh, I don't want to do video content. Especially when they do blogs, when they post on Twitter, when they're so active texting-wise everywhere else. Like all that text, bio, you know, long-form blog stuff could be a video. Those are all things that could be broken down to a video. You've already wrote all this stuff down, just transfer it over. Um, and I saw one person on YouTube, uh, she's really big on like growing that. And so if you just type, I don't know, video, YouTube, whatever, your next show pop up. Um, but she even said, she was like, I'll tweet like a hundred things in a week. Um, and whatever one starts to look, get a little more traction, mm-hmm. I took that and I made it into a post. Yep. And then from that, I make that into a video. And obviously it's not her, it's she has a really good team. At this point, she has a team. Um, but like for people who are already like that, like you already have a lot of information or people already ask you, hey, what what should I do about my AC unit if they run an AC business? business? Like you already know the answers to that. If you just take those points, write it down and let the AI software make more content for you, you can have a really good video 
to now post and have this amazing video that's educational or mm -hmm. fun or whatever that makes you more trustworthy online. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's something that Rose kept telling me is like, you got to like, no trust, right? Yeah. Like, like no, no trust. trust. There you go. See, they even knew. Uh, and I think that's where it's like <laughs> people post things on pictures or a text. And I think it's, I think it's fun. I think those are great things to do, but having video content is so powerful at this time frame. Yeah. I want to reiterate to all of the business owners out there who are wanting to do um, content for their business, whether it be on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, how, wherever your platform any is, platform, yeah. any platform, the three things that you need to be focused on is like people to like you and like your company, trust, building trust through um, the content that you're, you're putting out, educational things, um, information yeah. about maybe your local community and how your business will affect that. Um, and then what was the last one? Trust, <laughs> like, trust. like no and trust. Oh, yeah. and then no, like information about your company. Um, and so maybe you might have some more tips than that, but I feel like I kind of, yeah, I mean, it's the process that you first got to get them to like what you're doing. Yeah. And then as they like you, they get to know you. And as they get to know you, they start trusting you. And I will tell you, you'll probably disagree with me on this. Video is not the best way to do that, starting out. <laughs> and I got my stat ready. It is one of the easiest ways to do. Yeah. But one of the ways, and then you probably seen a lot of my content right now, blogs are the number one way. And you can even see top video people wow. going back to blogs because they all forgot about SEO over the years mm -hmm. when technically their video content on YouTube was SEO because yeah. YouTube is not a social media platform, by the way. It is a search engine. Yes. It's the second largest search engine. And the third one's going to be coming soon will be TikTok. TikTok is going to, I think, convert to a search engine because people are getting what they... For now, if yeah. I want to make a recipe, I don't go to YouTube. I go to TikTok because I know how to cook. I just want to see what they put in it. Yeah. So now you get a three-minute video. Pinterest anymore? What's that? <laughs> I never. I tried Pinterest. I failed. I just didn't get the concept. Like, why am I copying, clicking for you to watch and go find my? No, yeah. thank you. I tried to even put blogs on there. It didn't work. But blogs. The, there's an actual statistic I did. I found for a training I was doing that. Blogs drive a thousand percent more traffic than organic SEO really? or wow. organic social media. Sorry. So I'll say it again. SEO drives a thousand percent more traffic than organic social media. And, it's and YouTube is considered an you, SEO. Google and YouTube are essentially the same, but they are search engines. So anything, that's why you have to put your tags for your video. You have to write good descriptions, good titles, all of that is yeah. just wow. like, just think about when you search on YouTube, you're searching title, thumbnail, description. Yeah. And, and that's what everyone always puts like key, your keywords are so important. important. Keywords are so important, especially on your tags and all that stuff. Like it's so important because it's a search engine. Mm -hmm. It's searching that stuff. Um, I swear I learn as new things from you every single so day. So if you're <laughs> struggling doing video, I will tell you for me, I don't like doing video. I get people telling me, keep doing video, keep teaching, you're good at that. I'm like, no, I'm not. And But I enjoy it now, but I just don't like the video recording aspect. So I can't wait till I can hire a company like you guys that literally 20, I can come and just record a whole day's worth and you do all the work for See, me. See, that's what I, I try to push that into this market and I guess it's just not there yet. The idea of batch recording with someone who does it as a living. Like, this is what I do. Like, if you know your content, you come here and like in one day, we can record anywhere from 50 to 80 videos, like all short form, maybe some long form videos. Like that gives you so much like free time. Oh, I need a video. I can go to this mod. Oh, this one. I'm like, I'm right. gonna post this. Like, yes. especially if you use like the AI softwares, if that can help you out so much. Like, I don't get why people are like hesitant on. I mean, I get it because it because I don't think they it's know not, it's yeah. possible. Even for me, I still think I'd say I'm gonna batch record three videos in a day, and I'm lucky if I get two done. Because <laughs> then I get a phone call, dogs yeah. barking at me. Yeah. My I got this, and I swore I was putting my cell phone away, only checking it two hours a day. And then my <laughs> husband for Valentine's Day is like, oh, I got you a watch. I'm like, oh, and I, now I'm really going to be checking. Because yeah. he knows I'm not checking my phone. But it actually helps because then I'm like, oh, I can annoy this person and keep going. But people don't think it's possible to batch record. I actually had to go back to a regular watch because of that. I couldn't I, focus. Well, what's great, though, is I already have everything disabled on my phone. So the only thing I get is Messenger. 
mm. and text messages. And I don't even get those. For, nobody texts text, text oh. messages. <laughs> like you text I me. I can't but even text you. I, <laughs> it's probably because you have an iPhone and I have a real phone. So <laughs> Controversy. <laughs> That's Guys, a whole other video. This is going to be the first guest to ever get kicked off my podcast. Uh, <laughs> no, but right. I, honestly, right. t tell me a little bit about Karuvi because like that's something that like Rose does not stop talking about it. Um, and Karuvi. so this episode is not sponsored by Karuvi, but I do have a link and you can click on it. Um, well, technically it is. It's oh, then we're sponsored. My first sponsor, guys. Yeah. We made it, mom. Mom, I made it. You got the affiliate link that you Dang. put at the bottom. Yeah. So I it. forgot about that. Yes. You yes. made it. And but tell us about it. Use that link as much as you want. So basically, Karuvi came about. I... We can talk about that later, but I started real estate mm -hmm. and the first thing everybody finds out you have a marketing background and they're like, oh, can I pick your brain? Mm -hmm. If you ever have to, let me just PSA, if you ever have to say that to somebody, don't message them. Don't pick their brain. Make sure you have something of value to give back unless it's like super quick, but p people want to pick your brain for marketing. And so... Thermilla and I, uh, she's my sponsor uh, with EXP, and we started talking, and the number one problem people had in real estate with social media or videos is they were taking all this great social, social agent academy, learning how to use Facebook, Facebook ads, learning everything in and out on how to use the platforms and how they work. The number one question was, what do I post? Even though they gave you ideas of what to post, the actual creative part is where most people lack. And that's okay because they're not supposed to be good at that. You're yeah. a real estate agent. Why do you have to be a marketing expert? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we came up with Karuvi because people were paying for, um, like, to get daily posts. There's stuff like other platforms out there that will give you templates. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you're still doing the same thing. You've got to figure out what to post. you got to order the templates in their order. And if you, I'm sorry, but if you gave me 300 templates, I'd be like, I don't know what to do with these. Yeah. And so we just sat down with it. Like, There's got to be an easier way. So we just came up with a content planner that you can go in and choose whatever day you want. You can follow it in order. If you start not, on day 15, yeah. you can still start on day one if you're on the 15th of the month. And basically what it does is it gives you a strategy and we mix it up between templates and all of our stuff. What's so great, I think a genius about how this platform came together was the whatever post you're doing, it can be used for a blog. It can be used for short video, long form. I've d yes, all, I've done that. Yeah. It reels everything. Everything right. you can purpose this thing. And so it's just a way to give them something to follow because everybody puts so – we had an agent tell me, I spend three to four hours a day stalking other realtors, figuring out what they're posting, and then half the day they don't even post anything or they look like a real estate magazine. If you're posting real estate pictures, stop. You, they're going to go to Zillow to see all that. They want to connect with you. Somebody's yes. about to spend a half exactly. a million dollars on the house. Exactly. I better yeah. want to go have a beer with my realtor. Yeah. No, no offense. Yeah. Like, I need to be able to because this is a well, that's personal the thing. That, thing. Uh, that's what the whole. That's why people went to TikTok because Instagram became this big selling thing. Everyone who wanted yep. to sell something went on TikTok to. Sell, I mean, Instagram to sell. So it was always sell, 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 right. sell stuff. So they went to TikTok, but now TikTok is doing the same thing where they're trying to sell, sell, sell stuff. So like. People are sick of being sold to. Right. They want to know who you are, yeah. what you know, how much value can you add in my life? Like, they just want to know the value that they're returning back. Either right. you're going to make me laugh, you're going to make me learn something, or you're going to make me cry, something. Right. Like, or you're just bringing drama in my life. Like, they <laughs> like that stuff. That's why right. the Kardashians yeah. did so good. But, like, they want to stop being sold to. And so, like, having, like, that plan that you said, like, Rose showed me the whole website, like, the calendars, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, you got a lot of different stuff. And yeah, the biggest thing that like makes people like go wow is like when you talk about like national pancake day or national brownies day, like yeah. when you brought that up in the, uh, the last production day that we had here, like they were like, I didn't even think like, even after the zoom call, like when you hung up, they were like, I didn't even think about that. I could be posting you, about national pie day. Do you know that's, we had people when we first started, they canceled because of that. Really? They still don't get it. They're like, what does that have to do without real estate? And I'm like, everything people are connecting well, to right you. that's the thing it's not just real estate it's it, it you as a person you as a business mm -hmm. it has everything to do with that it's like, about networking but yeah. the thing is it, it has two things to do with real estate one realtors need to get out of their mind that they sell real estate you do not sell real estate you sell, you a, sell a lifestyle style. why do they want to mm. buy a house on your side of town why is living in galveston better than living in katy texas because it is <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe if you get your that 45 fixed, 
<laughs> that might be a different story. But the thing is, why do you want to live on that side of town? Why is, and then too, if I want to move, especially if I have kids or a family, yeah. I want to know that the school district's great, that's safe, whatever. Yeah. And you're going to want to make sure the realtor knows that they're not just, you know, blowing smoke. So you buy over here. So that's one reason in that it shows that you're an advocate in your community. You know what's going on. You should be posting about stuff like that. And the second thing is connecting. Yeah. Connecting. What was the other one? <laughs> See if they're doing this again. But we'll it's all, all yeah, we'll cut it out. We'll cut it out. And, and the thing is, though, is you have to show who you are as a realtor because if I'm connecting with you because, oh, you know, oh, these kid friendly parks over here. And plus, you're getting in front of the business. So if you tag yeah. somebody in your Instagram, you go out to eat, what happens? The restaurant tags it in two yeah. minutes. Guess what? I just got in front of 10,000 people I would never get in front of. And part of my target audience is inside that audience. It's a great way to network, it's instant. And people forget about that. They get so focused on, I got to do all this real estate content. I'm sorry, as a new real estate agent, I know nothing about real estate. I'm learning the business, right? So how am I going to post all these real estate tips? And that stuff is everywhere. You got to be unique in this yeah. market because it's saturated. That's, it is that's saturated. what I always, I push people, especially in the real estate when we did our last production day, I push like educate them. You're an expert in your field. Educate them on like, how do I, first home new buyers, like, educate me on that. I don't know nothing about that. Educate me on whatever. Like one lady uh, that we had, she came out ready to go. Um, she was even talking about like, make sure you come before you're signing, bring a checkbook. Cause you might have to pay $1, one cent and that you just don't have like bring your checkbook. And I was like, I never would have thought of it. I, I don't think when we went our signing, we brought any checkbook. No. So like the idea that she had that information Mm -hmm. made her valuable to me. Right. And so that's to me, when you have things like that on your story feed or in your Instagram or your blog post, like it makes you valuable enough for me to follow you. Right. And it, you, I might not like follow everything you do, but I was like, when I have a real estate question, I'm gonna go, Oh, let me go to her page. Like right. there's something and that I've you had have that happen. I've had several people who just pop up in my DMS and are like, Hey, I have this question. And I'm like, sure. Let me help you with that. Mm -hmm. I totally know. Oh, where do I go for this? Or, um, that was actually one of the reasons I knew where to get the passports because mm -hmm. I had someone say, Hey, I know that you are most, you're mostly in Galveston. Where would we go to go get passports? Like to get the passport paperwork. And I was yeah. like, this is so not a real estate question, but okay. I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it and works. I totally it helps get, me out. and I knew where it was because I've done it with my my kiddos. So I was like, "Oh, you're gonna go here and go to the second floor, and Maria's on the, the, the second floor." And, <laughs> you know, like just like right. information and who to connect with when they're there. And and honestly, yeah. I, it it wouldn't surprise me if she comes back around and's like, "Hey, I," re you know, actually she did. She came back around and sent me a DM, said, "Oh my God, I love this song. I know this band." The, the one with the with the sunglasses. Um, oh, the cowboy one that you yeah. did? Yeah. Um, she was like, I know a lot of people don't like this band, but I love this song. This is so <laughs> good. And I was like, oh, thanks. See, that's good because then you're making that connection. Because what I think people, f even in business, this is not new. This doesn't apply just to real estate. But yeah. if you own a marketing company, content creation company, you just put out random stuff. Because what happens is people are so scared that they're not going to know they're a realtor, that I build websites or that I make yeah. videos is that they get this scarcity mindset mm -hmm. and it's like, no, you just want to be remember memorable because yeah. there's so much out there. There's so much competition. How can you be memorable? And that's why you see all these crazy people like that millionaire mentor. I think it's that right. Million. Yeah. Millionaire mentor that he's literally a real estate agent, but he puts out funny memes all the time and it literally has like ton of followers. The, Does the, a the rap, the rapping realtor. No, it's called oh. Millionaire, I think Millionaire Mentor. He even puts stuff about other businesses, but he's a real estate agent, at least yeah. I think he is. And <laughs> But he has tons, he always puts like real estate memes, but he built even a business about buying templates from him with memes and yeah. they do content creation. So, he, but people remember him and every realtor I ever know, I can see that they liked it. And he always has like 2,000 likes, 7,000, wow. 10,000. But he was going outside the box. He didn't post anything yeah. about really look at this house for 299,000, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so you just have to be different and think people are afraid in this world to be different. And that's one thing I could care less. You like yeah. me, you like me, you don't, you don't. And that's why I like That's the this most freeing thing, right? Yeah. Is, is not caring whether, that was one of my biggest things was, was fearing what people would say mm -hmm. and going into this journey has really, and I don't know about you, but for me, it's like really freed uh, me from thinking or even caring what other people think. 
I know at the end of five years, I will look back and I will be like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, my life has been completely transformed um, because of the group that I've joined, because of the resources. Um, we didn't even mention that if you join our group in Karuvi, everything you need is in there. Mm-hmm. Like there's a dashboard just for team members. You get Karuvi for free if you join our mm-hmm. team. And in the dashboard, you have like seven different trainings, anywhere from learning how to um, buy investment properties, um, how to build your team, how to how, like everything, Dude. including Karuvi, Karu KV Core, um, CRM trainings, like yep. all, everything you would need is in there. And that's just it's. It's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity for any agent. It is because all the resources there, anything outside of what EXP offers, Mm -hmm. then you have what Mike's team offers, and then it just trickles down. Like the values, like I truly believe that we have one of the best value stacks in all of EXP. And I guarantee you, like I challenge people, if you're watching this, like book a call with me. Like I'm no pressure. Like what you see is what you get. And I don't like, if you don't want to be on my team, I don't want you. So that's the thing. Like I, I qualify people and I guarantee you bring your real estate value stack. If you're a broker, I dare you to come into a call because we have the best value stack and it takes the stress away it does. and allows you just to go work and you can actually focus on income producing activities. As real estate agents, we try to wear so many hats. I thought as a business owner, I tried to wear hats and then I get into real estate. I'm like, y'all need to calm it down. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you have to do so much <laughs> and they don't want to outsource anything and they don't want to get help, but you have to do so much that you spend more time on admin tasks, answering emails. And that's that. You don't even focus on sales. That is so that scarcity mindset, right? Mm-hmm. You're scared that the little percentage that they're going to take out of your check. But what does the the million dollar realtor say? The red book, the Kate that Keller Williams wrote. He says 30, 30, 30. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I mean, 30, 30, 40. 40 percent is invest. Uh, 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 oh, my God. It just left me. You guys are rubbing off on me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got three people on this call. No, no, that are no, no, no. It's thirty. It's thirty percent goes back into the business. Thirty percent is for like taxes and stuff like that, and then the other forty percent is what you would bring home as your right. actual net. So, yeah. I honestly, and and you think about that. If you're thinking only about the next check that you're going to be getting, one hundred percent your business is not going to But grow. that's it's the same thing for like us in the video video world and photography world like there's a lot of people that outsource their editing like they out, they pay for it to get editing yeah. they send that stuff out yeah it's a chunk of your income but the benefit of having someone do all the editing while you get to do other phone calls and do more things and do more creative stuff like that stuff pays off like you you make yeah. more money in the long run but you have more like freedom in the now yeah. moment. And I think yeah. that's where people get lost on like, oh, I shouldn't outsource as much or I shouldn't do this much or I shouldn't invest in this because I'm losing money. If you're looking, if you're thinking in that way, I think you're already kind of lost. Well, it's, I think it's the, the difference. And I have had realtors and other business owners say this. There is a difference between being self-employed and owning a business. Yeah. Self-employed, you're still living paycheck to yeah. paycheck. And if you don't work like a realtor, you don't own a business and you know you don't make money if you don't make a sale but as a business owner if you don't show up you're sick or you have to take a family trip your business still makes money and i was what's really funny is i was doing my renewals for my licenses uh, about a month ago and i was kind of going through this like i know all this marketing stuff and he said a comment in this book that i really liked because he said most business owners have to learn how to go from a specialist to a generalist when you work for somebody, mm. you are a specialist. I was a web designer. That was my specialty, web design and SEO. I could do that with my eyes closed. And when I got into my business, I still have a hard time letting go of the web design. I'll outsource everything else. But I'm like, no, nope, you're not doing it the exact way I want it. And guess what? I'm still keeping myself as a specialist. We have to learn how to become a generalist because our deal is to run the business. So you need to pass your knowledge and oversee that stuff, Mm -hmm. but let people help you grow your business. Only way to scale. So if you don't want to scale, that's perfectly fine. Some people are happy with keeping their business small and intimate, and that's great if that's your goal. But if you really want to scale, 
the first step is like the frozen song. Yeah. You gotta let go. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. And that is hard for me because I'm a Man, control freak. Uh, honestly, that's how I feel about the marketing part of, uh, and it's it it's one of the things that I am working towards. And I, I know I haven't been an agent for that long, but there's a lot of things that I'm I'm all about the big vision and about scaling mm -hmm. and. I'm already looking for areas where yeah. I can scale and the things that I'm not ready to let go of, I'm going to hold on to while I'm still yeah. not able to. Well, you, you have to, you have to start, you at least have to start thinking about scaling. Like uh, the first time I hired someone to do the, the f edits for a real estate photo, dude, he did it overnight. I, I sent him all the stuff that like, I think it was like eight o'clock at night. I sent him everything. I was like, all right, man, I'm going to bed. Like, cause we go to bed pretty early and he's all right. Wake up in the morning. I think it was like 6.30. He's like, hey, I'm done. I was like, great. And then I see like he's about to go to bed because he like the Time it Time tells you. Um, and I'm like, dude, these are great. He's like, all right, cool. I was like, yeah, just upload them to my Dropbox and you're good. I sent him the money and that was it. Like within overnight, like as I slept, he was working. Right. While he's sleeping, I'm working. Like it's a great partnership. People who aren't using this type of service or this type of world, like you're missing out because these guys make you faster. They make you more reliable. Like if he's not working out, let me go find someone else. Like yep. it, it's such a, a, a cool thing like that we have in this world. I mean, I, I would hate. Living and it's like, getting easier and cheaper to do it too. Yeah. Like, no matter what your you know opinion is on outsourcing and things like that. But overall you're helping an economy, you're helping a person. And on top of it, it's never going to go perfect the first time it's going to, the problem is people, I think, because I'm going through this right now, is I think people feel like, oh, it didn't go right with this VA or it didn't go right with this person. It's okay. It's the same thing in business. Employees don't work out. It's going to take a moment and yeah. they got to learn how you work. And I heard a thing, I don't know who it was from, but it says that you hire somebody that can do 70% of what you do. And then you do that again and now you have 140% that they can do more than you. Mm -hmm. And it takes that that kind of vision. Yeah. And you, it's a trial and error. One thing 100%. that I'm really trying to do is to record everything that I do. If I'm posting something to Karuvi, because I still immediately put all that stuff there myself, if I'm posting something to Karuvi, I'm starting to record. This is how you go in. This is where you upload. This is how you edit this. That's good. This is how you do this. And so now I built uh, you know, an SOP. Yeah. And now when somebody comes in, their first day is go watch all these videos. Yeah. yeah. Here's everything you need. Don't call me. Don't message me if you have a question. Watch this first. And then if I didn't cover it, let me know. And I think it's just getting yourself into those process. And that's why most people don't get started. Yeah. They're not prepared. They don't want to take, oh, I'm spending more time developing this and I can just do it myself faster. Yeah. And I, we, Thermil and I have caught ourselves saying that, like, I can just do it faster. Of course we can do it faster. This is our specialty. But if we want to scale, yeah, because we have a lot of you businesses. Have to. We, I had an opportunity to go to, uh, like, it was a social media content hangout totally not my place to be i'm the guy that records these things these are the guys in front of the cameras and they it, it's Their the whole tiktok instagram world these are the these are the influencers i think the number was over half a billion followers were in the room wow. like it was it was nuts like i mean i think it was like 30 people but out of out of those 30 people there's like almost half a billion followers um and i thought that was just nuts like it's not my place to be but i got an opportunity to be in the room and i started hanging out with these guys and one of the guys says something very interesting. He's like, I'll hire five people to do the same job. He's like, one, because I just want to see who's going to do it faster, who's going to see what if it needs to be, who's going to impress me, or who's just going to lack. Like, and he'll have, a several, he'll have several people like, oh, man, I'm just going to, I'll get to you next week. But he's already delivered the package by another guy last yesterday. Right. And so, like, he just knows, okay, I can hire this guy again, but I won't hire that guy again. Right. And he's just, he does that a couple of times when he's looking to scale up on what people could do something better than him or who could do it the same, but fast. And so I think that was a really, like in that Super moment, smart. I was like, I have to start scaling up. I have to start looking at people who can edit something like who can do this faster than me. Maybe not as good as me, but can do it fast. Um, because for me, sometimes these podcasts, I go a little extra, um, it's one of the reasons when I first started, people were like, oh, your video quality looks great. And I was like, yeah, well, I got over a decade of experience. I'd be <laughs> really mad if I didn't. Um, but I think I spent too much time setting this up, getting together and editing it where it's like, it takes me over to even post them. Yeah. Um, and these things have been a big influence just for us that people get to know who I am. People like me for some reason. Uh, <laughs> they like us as a couple. Like I've had several people like, oh, you guys can even do great things together. I can see it. And I'm like, thanks. Like, 
we kind of see it too. Yeah. Um, and so it I took just, us a minute to get here. Thanks. Yeah, but I want to <laughs> hire somebody that can do these edits for me that I can pay them, you know, some money. Um, but I don't have to do it. Right. I, I enjoy this talking, hanging out. I don't really enjoy the editing for these because I'm like re-listening to everything. I'm like, oh, dang, I was such an idiot. Why did I say that? So I got to <laughs> cut myself off to look right. good. Um, but, but I think, too, you're also seeing it through your eyes and yeah. other people see it a different way. And you might, they might edit, even though it might not be the most high quality, but they might have a better edit. Oh, of for sure. Saying. Like, yeah, no, that's more important. You're like, no, I didn't like the way I said it. And it's the same with me. Like, I, I hate, I still don't like video. Actually, I was like, person, I... 10 years ago, I would not be doing this. I would be in the side room, like heaving and <laughs> so nervous. Even playing piano from the church, I'd like, uh, like do this like weird sounds. And everybody's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I remember I had to play piano in front of 6,000 people in church. And I was like, <laughs> I was like cold sweat. They're like, are you sick? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> but I got thrown to the wolves in doing it. Uh, one of my bosses was like, you have to give the presentation. I was like, no. He's like, no, you're going to do my part, my closing. And I'm like, no, you're the only one that does that. He's like, well, today it, it's you because I have to leave. And he, because he's a business owner, yeah. he goes without him. And I got up and I just memorized everything that he said. I said it. And then he's like, oh, that's great. Now you're doing it every week. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I don't talk in front of people. <laughs> I, like speech class was horrible. I was like, d d d uh -uh. yeah. And now I'm like, oh, this is actually fun. Because I could talk yeah. to friends. And it's the same thing. It's just yeah. you. You, you get good at it, and then... You practice, right? And that's, I think, one of the reasons I always constantly, when people are like, well, I don't really like what I look like on camera. Okay, then practice in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. Practice your facial expressions. I talk a lot with my hands. I like being animated, because mm -hmm. most people, in, in, when I'm recording, if I'm recording next to someone, usually their hands are down. And you stand out. So I'm constantly, my hand, I'm Puerto yeah. Rican too. How many so times do you hit your microphone? Because I do a that lot. all the time. I'm like, boof, boof. I'm like, sorry. I constantly <laughs> talk with my hands. But it, people just practice in front of the mirror. Yeah. Practice your smile. Practice when you're talking and you think something's going to be funny. Like your, your sort of grin. Right. Or, you know, like like practice with how, how you look into the camera. And there we go. We hit it. Um, yeah, you it know, happens. It, you know, just practice and you'll be amazed at at when you go to do your first video or your 10th video how much more natural you feel i think yeah. w we have this misconception that everything has to be perfect the first time and we're actually kind of if you're going to start creating content this is probably the best generation and era to do it because they don't like perfect this yeah. is why i don't even really edit half my videos i just hit record and if i mess up i start over yeah and it's probably a dumb way to do it but I literally now I've gotten where I can do a video, a 20 minute video, one take. Oh, I'm saying, um, and this and that people don't care. They watch yeah. the video. It looks real. It doesn't look like it's planned. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. So I'm not worried about that. But also you have to remember people don't see you the way you see yourself. Mm -hmm. And that took me forever. Cause I'm like, Oh, they're going to see my chin. They're going to see this. They're going to see that. Oh, I got one hair out of place and I'm watching my video. I'm like, why didn't I see that hair? You, you know, know? And that's it's, so nobody funny. notices no. it. They yeah. don't care. They, they did that. That thing on TikTok where where you put in your in and as an animated character, and I was like, that doesn't look like me. And I know she showed me like three different versions. This doesn't look like me, and I was like, it kind of does. And I was like, oh my god, is this really me? Oh my god. So yes, I see what you mean by how people look at you. But you have to understand, and then people are gonna click. There's people that aren't gonna like you, and there's people that are gonna love you. And yeah. guess what? I just want to work with people that like me. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't like me, there's a lot of people that don't like me. Yeah. And now I'm at the point now where like. You know, my husband's like, oh, well, what are they? I'm like, I don't care because yeah. they're never going to be our friend. They're not going to be my client. If they are my client, they're probably going to be the ones that ask for a million things. And they're going to be somebody you don't want to work with. Yeah. So when you let go of that, like you said earlier, it's freeing. And you can actually focus on what you need to focus and stop yeah. worrying about stuff that yeah. you just, you know, Bible talks about fear and worrying all yeah. the time. Because it's so true. It holds us back from everything. Yeah. yeah. And it's when so you finally true. let that go, it's just like, okay. Like, I'm telling you, 10 years ago, if you would have asked me to do this, I would have said no. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Even if you would have paid me a million dollars, you would not have done it. Ten, it just 10 years ago, Rose would have still been wanting to be a realtor versus being one. 
<laughs> so we probably wouldn't be in this room. But I want to end it out here because we talked about a lot and covered a lot. I hope you guys liked this episode. I did. I really enjoyed it. Probably when I rewatched this, I probably won't. Other than my TV flickering for some reason. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys for following us. I'll leave all his links and everything down below. Um, like, follow, subscribe, all things YouTube. Like, Go check you, out Kurvi. You probably already unclicked from this video. Bye. Oh, 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 oh.